Hey guys, so today's video is another <laughs> installment in the, I think it's now been titled Carmageddon because I think every single tea from the past like three years is coming back up and it is hitting people that have seemingly won the last few dramas, if that makes sense. Like everyone that was the winner is now going down and everyone that was the loser is now coming back up. So fun stuff. Do do do. So before we get into the video, Instagram, Twitter, follow me on there. It's a fun time, but also, Second channel, get on it. Thank you. Uh, Cause I really enjoy posting on there, even though it's like a rare occurrence, it's a really fun time, okay? Let me have it. So let's get into it. There are a few extra pieces of tea coming up and I think it's all just like little stories now coming together and little like bits of information that if you don't catch them, you don't really have the full picture. But once you do catch them, you're like, this is all making sense. So we're gonna start with the fact that there was a clip of Jeffree Star in a, like a jewelry place, I guess, doing some kind of, you know, spending of money. And he was bragging about the fact that he co-owns Morphe. The store? Yeah, so it's called Morphe Brushes. So it's like a company that um, I invested in and I have my own brand in the store. Kind of like a Sephora, but like better. And they were like, what's Morphe? And he was like, well, Morphe's kind of like, mm, you know, a makeup brand, but they also have like my stuff being sold in their store. So they're kind of like a Sephora, like you really, you you, you really pushed it there. And now T-Search actually came out with a receipt. Now I'm not sure how like legitimate that receipt is or if like it's actually Morphe, but apparently Morphe replied saying that they don't support Shane anymore, but they support Jeffrey, which to me just sounds absolutely strange, but it does go along with what is happening on morphe.com right now where the conspiracy palette is gone, but all of Jeffrey's other products are still on the website. Isn't that strange? Isn't that strange? Isn't that very, very strange? People do think that he's a co-owner. Now, before I get into kind of the clarification, uh, that would be a huge FTC guideline violation. The FTC is very clear about the fact that you have to disclose if you have some kind of an investment or some kind of a gain from promoting a brand, whether that's monetary, whether that is by receiving free products. So for example, receiving PR is not a sponsored video. Because I remember in my last video on my second channel, I was showing PR that I was sent by a company and someone was like, isn't this technically a sponsored video? No, because I wasn't paid with products, I was just sent products. If there is no contract and no obligation for you to show the products, then that is not a sponsored video, it's simply PR. You still have to disclose PR, but it's not a sponsored video. Now, if there was a contract being drafted where they said, you have to talk about our products in a video for 30 seconds, you have to say this, this, and this, and in exchange, we will send you free products, then that is in fact a sponsored video. So just to clarify that a little bit, I've heard people are very confused about FTC guidelines just in general, and it's not just people that are not YouTubers, even YouTubers are highly confused about FTC guidelines. I feel like they're just not looking it up and they're all breaking laws left, right, and center. I don't mean all of them, but a lot of them. Like for example, recently I was going to make a whole video and then all of this happened about Susan Yara, who is a skincare, I guess, enthusiast. She's not like an expert. She's not a professional. She's not, she doesn't have any kind of education. I don't believe in skincare, which is a lot, of, which is why a lot of people are so um, critical of her because she doesn't necessarily say that she's an expert, but she almost makes it seem like she's an expert in skincare. In care and you can be educated without having formal education but there is that distinction to be made and yeah so she runs a channel that is her personal channel which is i think susan yara and then she runs her big channel which is mixed makeup and that's where she does most of those like the videos that blew up on her channel were the ones where she did reactions to famous people's skincare routines they were very addictive i watched all of them and she has recently come out with a brand called naturium which is her skincare brand but she never disclosed that it was her skincare brand. So I think she came out with the product in February. She sent them to a lot of skincare influencers without telling them, allegedly, that they were hers. Uh, she posted on like her Facebook groups and like social media, basically just constantly posting about these products as if she was receiving them in PR. And when someone said like, oh, where did you find these products? She was like, the brand sent them to me in PR. And actually she had a 25% discount code, which is weird because it's her brand. And then she filmed a lot of videos where she was doing a skincare routine using her own products, but like almost acting surprised about how the products were behaving. When in reality, she was the one that formulated them and priced them. So she was like, oh my God, I'm so surprised that this is only $20 when I was like you made it $20 <laughs> why are you surprised and people were like yeah it's shady that she didn't want to tell people that it's her brand uh, she claimed it was because she wanted to know the true reaction of people and she doesn't want it to be an influencer brand the, you are an influencer and you released a brand therefore it is an influencer brand 
Marlene Estelle released Makeup Geek. She was an influencer and therefore that was an influencer brand that then, because of the quality of the product, became an actual just normal brand. But you have to build up to that. You have to like build an audience that isn't just there because of your influence. But for the like first few years, people are, mainly it's going to be your fans using the products and therefore you're going to be an influencer brand. It's for example like Jaclyn Hill, right? Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics is going to be purely an influencer brand until she builds up some kind of a like brand recognition where people that don't know who Jaclyn Hill is are going to buy the makeup almost like Maybelline or L'Oreal you know anyway so that was actually a huge um, FTC guideline violation that she could be fined for because people were buying the products because she was recommending them when she really had a gain in people buying those products if that makes sense so you have to disclose when you co-own stuff which now quickly going back to Jeffree Star if he co-owned Morphe all of his videos where he's reviewing Morphe products or mentions Morphe products in any way, shape or form would actually be an FTC guideline violation because he would have gain in selling those products and therefore it would be important to him to be able to sell products from Morphe to people. Now, uh, there was an Insider article that was written where Insider got information from Morphe saying that Jeff Star is not the co-owner of Morphe. He, he hasn't invested in Morphe. Uh, the only involvement he has with Morphe is the fact that Morphe sells his products and that they have had a collab before. That is what Morphe is claiming. Now, if they're lying as well, then I'm pretty sure laws were broken. So it's kind of crazy that that's another lie, yet another lie that Jeffree Star has told in the recent, you know, few years. Like recently, the fact that I'm gonna get to it, that he's hanging out with his grandma. He's not. <laughs> so yeah, Insider confirmed that he is not involved with Morphe in the way that he claimed he was. And, and this came out of his own mouth. He told someone that he co-owns Morphe, unless they try to really get around it and maybe he doesn't own Morphe currently, but he did back then. But yeah, that'd be shady. Anyway, so uh, Jeffree Star recently posted a picture on either Instagram or Twitter saying that he was excited to take his grandma for her 103rd birthday to see her old house that she used to live in. And he posted a picture that he posted like in January. So that's false. Um, and his nails in that picture and in his Instagram story that day were different. Uh, so unless he got his nails taken off and done, strange. And then actually someone else posted a picture of him with his fans where he was wearing like a tie dye tracksuit. And then uh, that same tie dye tracksuit was in a Stradman video who is like a car channel where he was picking up his car. So that was on the same day. So in reality is, does the grandma even exist to have you did? Is she 103, 100? Is she, does she exist? Of course she exists because otherwise he wouldn't be here. But um, can we have an explanation? But also the fact that he's now leaving Shane Dawson to deal with the issues on his own is shady. He's basically just running off pretending that he's unbothered and he's, you know, pretending to be <laughs> running around just like with his grandma and his fans and picking up a car while Shane Dawson's literally having a mental breakdown at home over the Tati video on live stream. Um, it's crazy because Shane Dawson has been constantly defending Jeffree Star throughout this whole situation. And people have been having a go at Shane Dawson for doing so. And now when Shane Dawson is being called out, Jeffree Star is nowhere to be seen. Isn't that quite interesting? Wasn't I saying pretty much directly to Shane Dawson in my videos that First of all, you're losing your reputation because of hanging out with Jeffree Star. And I said that to him privately as well. I said, hey, I don't respect the friendships that you have and I just can't defend it. And then I also said in videos that Jeffree Star was gonna drop him the moment he could and he did. So unless it's talking behind the scenes, uh, kind of like how they can fix this PR wise, like what can we do? Um, but like, why isn't Jeffree Star speaking out? Why isn't he defending Shane Dawson the way Shane Dawson has been wholeheartedly defending Jeffree Star? Just blows my mind anyway. Even, and I didn't speak about this in my last video because I spoke about how Trisha has been calling out Tati, but in that same video, Trisha also called out Jeffree Star. Now, Trisha has been in full defense mode o over Shane Dawson and the stuff that he's done, which I don't agree with. Um, I don't care if you're friends with someone or not, the shit they did when it's this bad should be called out. But she did in fact confirm, which she denied before. She said that her and Jeffrey are close friends, that they're fine, he treats her really well. Um, but that was after screenshots of a conversation between her and Tab came out where she told Tab that she's scared to come out against Jeffree Star in case he cancels her, which if someone can cancel Trisha Paytas, that is a whole different talent in regards to canceling people. I think that's just like wild. Like the fact that Jeffree Star can cancel Trisha Paytas. 
speaks volumes on the kind of power he has in the industry. Anyway, that conversation came out and in a video she said that they're fine, that they're friends, yada yada yada. And then in this video she said that she doesn't agree with Jeffree Star, that everything that was said about kind of him body shaming her and all that stuff is true. So now she's coming out because I think she's seeing that everyone else is coming out against Jeffree Star so it's finally like safe for her to come out against Jeffree Star, which still perpetuates the idea that everyone's scared to come out against him because even Trisha Paytas was scared to come out against him. Now there was also a rumor, which is such a strange thing, that Shane Dawson was in hospital because someone wrote under a video, not sure what video, not sure where, how, when, but there was a video on YouTube and there was a comment that said that someone is keeping up with TMZ and apparently TMZ is convinced that Shane Dawson is in hospital, uh, but they can't confirm it. So someone I think reached out to Shane Dawson and asked if that was true and he said no. So I think Shane Dawson's fine, but that was really strange. So uh, in regards to Shane Dawson, actually Gabby Hanna deleted 40 million worth of views that were just purely Shane Dawson videos. So people are wondering if the next person that's gonna come out with a video against Shane Dawson is gonna be Gabby Hanna. We don't know, because she deleted all her social media as well, which now people are wondering if the person that she was scared of or the institution that she was scared of was Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. Like when she kept on, kept on tweeting like, if I go silent, then you know something's wrong with me. Like something happened to me. And that was after she was giving drama channels like tea on Jeffree Star, saying that he still uses the N word behind the scenes. Yeah, so that's really strange. Anyway, now Dolan Twins and Bretman Rock unfollowed Jeffree Star, along with Morgan Adams, who followed, unfollowed, followed, did all that stuff. Uh, I think Jojo C1 followed Shane Dawson. There's just a lot of stuff happening, uh, which is strange because the Dolan Twins filmed a lot of collabs with Jeffree Star after Dramageddon uh, 2, I think it was. It was during By Sister. The Dolan Twins filmed a lot of collabs with Jeffree Star, so for them to now unfollow him, were they also scared of him? Like, did he have tea on them as well? Like, is that what's happening? Is everyone just hanging out with Jeffree Star because they're all scared of him? Imagine being that powerful. And now Princess May also put out some cryptic tweets. Princess is uh, Bretman Rock's sister. So someone tweeted out saying, clearly he apologized and he regrets it. Before you knew this, you would enjoy the out of his content, wouldn't you? It's the old him. When you're perfect and make zero mistakes, hate on people because of their past. And that was in regards to Shane Dawson and Princess May actually quote retweeted that and said, I'm not even gonna argue, just know tonight you're gonna regret this tweet and you're gonna call yourself a dumb which made it sound like some tea was coming out tonight. And then she actually tweeted out saying, nothing is happening tonight. It was just, I was just telling her that after her tweet, she's gonna regret it by tonight. You guys are taking it too seriously. And it's like, yeah, we're taking it seriously because you literally said you're gonna regret it by tonight, which makes it sound like something's coming out tonight. Which is why everyone's wondering if people are releasing videos, which is why uh, Nikita Dragon tweeted out like a lot of cryptic tweets regarding posting a video. And it made it sound like it was gonna be some tea being spilt. I'm wondering, right, out of everyone that's fallen out of Jeffree Star, who is the most likely to film a video on him? So we have the contenders, uh, Nikita Dragon, James Charles, uh, Gabriel Zamora, Bretman Rock, uh, Princess May, Laura Lee, Mani Mue, Nikki Tutorials. Now let's talk about Nikki Tutorials for a minute. Uh, do you guys remember when Nikki Tutorials had to very sadly like come out as transgender? Not sadly because whatever, but it's just because she was blackmailed to do so and she wasn't ready to come out yet, which is very upsetting. And now we're finding out that Jeffree Star has blackmail on everyone. And people are wondering if, if the person that was blackmailing Nikki Tutorials could have possibly been either Jeffree Star or someone to do with Jeffree Star that was told to do that for him. But that's obviously very alleged information. Like that is very out there. But people are wondering if considering everyone is now saying that he's got blackmail on everyone, if that was something that Maybe he didn't like, you know, send the email going, hey, I know this thing about you, I'm gonna tell everyone, but what if he told someone to do it on behalf of him? Or he did it anonymously? Like people are wondering if, like, would he be stupid enough to release all the information publicly as him, like as himself, would he be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna release this information out there? Or would he do it subtly, like give the information to drama channels, give it to smaller YouTubers, do it anonymously? Like, isn't that smarter to do for him? Why can't I click this pen? Okay, there we go. So people are wondering if the Nikki Tutorials blackmail was in fact Jeffree Star. Now, uh, Cheeto, Shane Dawson's cat, has his own Instagram. That's on like 300 and something K. But apparently is ran by a fan because people were following the account and Cheeto, the account, posted Shane Dawson's picture, picture with the caption, I will always support and love Shane. We all have to remember that Shane isn't perfect. No one is, we all make mistakes, whether they're big or small, doesn't matter. We all make them and not allowing somebody to learn and grow from them, it's not fair nor right. We must allow everybody to learn and become better. Shane has allowed us to see 
that he's a changed person. Cancelled culture loves to ruin careers. Loves holding on to people's past and that's not okay. I will always be here for Shane. All the negativity has to stop. Use that energy to spread love and treat people with kindness, always. And people on Twitter thought that Shane was writing about himself from his cat's perspective, which that would be absolute insanity. Like, that's too far. <laughs> um, no, this is like apparently a fan account. So it was like a very dedicated fan that was tweeting out about Shane Dawson just basically being like, hey, like Cheeto loves you. But that's just hilarious. Like it's absolutely hilarious. Imagine if Shane Dawson actually ran this account and did this about himself. That's funny. That's, that's pretty, pretty hilarious if you ask me. Slightly going off, off sphere. I feel like because we've been focusing on this drama so much and everything else, we kind of forgot the fact that recently Jacqueline Hill came back and started like uploading a lot of videos on YouTube and people were wondering, hey, is there a launch coming out? And she teased the launch on Instagram stories about a setting spray that is coming out with probably Morphe because I don't think she'd do it herself. So yeah, she does have a new launch. I wonder how long after this launch she's gonna keep on uploading on YouTube. I just wanna know. Considering we're talking about beauty tea, I thought I'd just throw that in there because I have no other videos to throw it into. So that was pretty interesting. Next, people are wondering, going back to Morphe a little bit, why during Dramageddon 1 did uh, Morphe immediately get rid of Laura Lee from their website, but now that all the coming out about Jeffree Star that's been coming out for ages like his association with criminals etc why is it that his stuff is still being sold in Morphe um and people are wondering like hey um is it because he has money invested in Morphe like that's why people are so convinced that he must have some kind of stake in Morphe because why else would they be going this hard for him or is it just because he makes them a lot of money like he's got his collabs he sells all his products in Morphe like is it because of that mm, I don't know some very interesting tea is that a lot of episodes, I think four episodes of Shane Dawson's series with Jeffree Star about the palette have now been copyright claimed by Sony and they're like blocked. You can't watch them right now. Um, so they've completely like taken them down, which is weird. And then there was actually a girl that people thought was the one behind the copyright strikes called Katie Turner, who was the one that did the music for the series. And she tweeted out saying that she didn't do it, but she respects whoever did it because she's clearly now upset that she was like tied into this series and her career was tied into this series without her realizing what kind of a person Shane and Jeffrey are. Then Keemstar tweeted out at Tana Mojo saying, I must say Tana Mojo, I find it kind of up that Shane Dawson literally saved your career from ending and you're not publicly supporting him. Clearly nobody can support these old videos from Shane, he's clearly wrong but you can still support him as a person. And Tana replied saying, I want to make a video answering everything I'm being tweeted, I just am incredibly torn by the thought of being a part of a bigger problem of diverting people's focus to YouTube drama versus the bigger issues at hand going on in the world and how we can help, I don't know. I feel like that is deflecting hugely, like heavily deflecting. Uh, bringing in like Things happening in the world, it's just an easy excuse to not have to talk about this. And then she goes, how about you respond to Colin Barry? And then she doesn't respond to that. And she also then tweets out saying, too much to say on Twitter, Keem. And someone says, make a video then. And regarding Colin, she has now apologized because a lot of tweets from her past are coming out, a lot of N words, a lot of jokes, a lot of very, very racist jokes. Yes, she was young, but she claimed that she never was racist, that she just was ignorant. But now it's coming out that she genuinely made like racially charged jokes. So she has posted this on Twitter saying, I refuse to be as ignorant as I've been in the past for life. I will take that and make it all more reason to fight to educate others now. I know who I am inside and I know where my morals lie. I am forever sorry for things I've said in the past, but no, I am not that person now. First, I'd like to apologize to Colin directly for my silence. There are no excuses. I should have talked and listened to you. Instead, I've been trying to find the words to address this and apologize in a way that won't further hurt anyone and educate myself on how to handle this properly. I'm so sorry that came with any silence, but I am taking responsibility for all my actions in the past. I know I'm an adult. There are no excuses for my behavior. And I know that I have done my best to educate myself and grow as a person from who I was in the past. I want to be the best version of myself who continues to grow and I but I know that just educating myself isn't enough to truly grow and I need to take accountability for my past actions and address them in order to truly grow. I'm sorry for staying silent. I'll continue to be addressing and apologizing for everything with full transparency. I want to apologize directly to Carlin Barry for anything I ever did to make him feel that I was being microaggressive or racist. That is so far from who I am and I'll spend a lifetime trying to show you that. I want to apologize once again for all my past tweets as they are unacceptable and disgusting and I know how truly far I am from that person now. To think I've ever had a sense of humor that relied on shock value like that disgusts me. I am so sorry to anyone who was angered by my silence. I should have 
Instantly said this, it breaks my heart to see people say I'm only being perf a performative activist. I truly stand by my morals now and will continue using my platform and doing everything I can to fight for what is right and equality. But I completely understand how my silence was not the right thing to do. If that's how I want to be perceived, I will be better. Thank you to my fans for holding me accountable and expecting better. Anything I can do to be better, grow and be a help to society with my platform and nothing but that. Please let me know. I am not that tunnel and I refuse to do anything uh, but evolve and educate myself. I'm so sorry it took me this long to even say this. And someone said, why did it take you so long to address this? And she said, it should have never. I truly just wanted to take everything in, reflect on my actions and truly make a plan of action to be better. I still shouldn't have waited this long. It was inexcusable. And then someone else replied saying, you had the time to text Anna Campbell but not tweet. Bye. So that's that on that. People are also wondering, I know I'm jumping back and forth right now, but people are also wondering why Tati's video wasn't trending, but Shane Dawson's apology was trending. Like what is happening there? And now we know that Tati was asked by YouTube directly to take down the Bye Sister video. Like I said, the options for people posting a video right now are endless, including, and I'm gonna add Gabby Hanna into this list of people, someone waiting for a video. Like I said, Nikita Dragon, James Charles, Gabriel Zamora, Bretman Rock, Laura Lee, Manu Mue, Nikki Tutorials, Gabby Hanna, anyone want to come out and post a video right now about Jeffree Star, you can do it. Also, it's kind of like what Tati said about how he holds blackmail on people. And he's going to try and use that to deflect from his actions so that he can cancel other people once again and get away with his scandals. Now, if these people know, right, if you guys know that you did something in front of Jeffree Star that he could potentially hold his blackmail against you, come out, make a video, say, I did this, 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 and this. He holds this and this blackmail on me. And I want to publicly apologize now and hold myself accountable. And that way you take all the power away from him and say, hey, I messed up. I'm apologizing. I'm sorry that ever happened. And let's just, you know, you guys don't have to accept my apology, but I'm just here to say sorry. Yeah, if you guys just take that power away from him and make it known that you don't, you know, you don't agree with what you said in the past or what you did in the past or what kind of tea he has on you. But also what Tati said is that a lot of these people said things that they would never say, but maybe they were just almost manipulated into saying those things or doing problematic things. Doesn't take away from the fact that they said problematic things, but there could be a lot of, like there could be more of a deep thing going on there where he's just got a tendency of pushing people to do things that they don't want to do because he's more powerful and they're scared of him. So I'm just saying everyone that thinks that he's got blackmail on, on them, please come out, film a video, apologize, and we can all hopefully move on from this without him. That's the tea for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, anything comment down below, and subscribe because I post videos every time something happens. So if you wanna know about that stuff, <laughs> hit that bell, you'll be notified when that's happening. Social media links and second channel description, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.